It's no secret that I love Next.js. It's also no secret that I love TypeScript, which is why it's so frustrating that these things don't always get along. If you're not already familiar with the blog post I wrote almost two years ago, I was not happy with the state of type safety in Next. The, the picture says it all. I was upset that it didn't feel like Next cared much for type safety and the complex interactions that were necessary to get type systems to behave properly. And when you now have network boundaries from back end to front end, having that type system be really powerful, more important than it's ever been. This article was written well before server components or app router were even a thought. They might have been planning a little bit, but it was certainly not the big public plan just yet. And I wanted to cover how things have changed, how Next was not type safe before and how it both has improved, but also hasn't and where the problems still exist in using Next in a fully type safe application. I still think good type safety from back end to front end is incredibly important. And while Next has made progress, it's not where I want it to be just yet. So let's dive in. In this article, I'm again, really focused on the page router behaviors. The first argument I make is when you're working in a type safe system, should you be writing more types or less? The intuitive answer to this is obviously if the system's type safe, you should have lots of types everywhere. But for type safety to be really consistent and strong, inference tends to be the better solution because then you only need to change a type or a behavior in one place and your whole system will be updated accordingly. Huge credit to Alex, the creator of TRPC for this beautiful meme. But the, the core example I give here is imagine a model in your SQL database. I'm just using Prisma syntax here, but you have a user has an ID that's a string and a name that's an optional string. So you know you have an ID and you might have a name. So the TypeScript type would look something like this. Maybe it's name question mark colon string, but it's nice to have nulls when it's coming out of your database. But yeah, here's the Theo Spice. You should never have to write types that look this much like your data models. I use Prisma as the example. The get user ID call calls prisma.user.find first where ID, and this gives you a type safe result because Prisma uses the model to generate types that are accurate. The problem isn't that step. It actually works pretty well. And now with tools like Drizzle, where you're writing the model inside of TypeScript, you can infer all of this without a compiler step externally, which is really, really good DX. The problem comes when you have to go over the wire from server to client, and Next often breaks that inference contract. The example I give here is again with the OG page router, get server side props. Get server side props takes in a context. It has params, which in this case, we're grabbing the ID from it. And then we're grabbing the user by calling this Prisma call and we return it here. And now we know in the props for this page, we have props.user and it might have a name. Sadly, this is not type safe at all. The only reason this would work is because everything's being auto cast to any. We don't know in this user info component what get server side props returned. And the inference helpers that Next gave us to try and infer this off are really, really broken. There's a bunch of cases where things will break even if you type this correctly manually. If you change name to username in the database, you select a subset of prisma.user values if you just selected ID instead of getting the whole object. If you change the key from user to something else here, or if you accidentally delete this get server side props function entirely, which yes, as I said there, I've done that before. And if the props expect something and the server side props doesn't return it, you no longer are type safe. In fact, you're no longer runtime safe. That code's probably going to throw errors and not render what you expect in a lot of situations. And that's terrifying because there will be no red squiggly line warning you when this happens, even if you manually type everything correctly. I give the example of importing the user type from Prisma and assigning this as the prop directly. And yeah, this will solve the problem if we change the database model. But what if we change the Prisma select where we're only selecting ID, we're selecting a partial set of the user object, but this expects the whole object. That code doesn't work. That's not doing what the type definition describes. At the time, Next provided this infer get server props type that you could use as the type definition here. Actually, I, I reordered this here to make it clear. I put the get server side props function on top so that I could infer just top to bottom. So we have this, it returns whatever it returns. Server side props is infer get server side props type from this function. This is a lot to read, but it does what it's supposed to mostly. It infers the return type from here, gives you the prop that you can then use as your prop definition for the page function. However, this is a really weird internal implementation though, where the props type gets set to key string colon any. And it also infers props never if you don't specify certain input types in certain places. It's obnoxious. And I ran into a ton of edge cases with this where it didn't actually make your code more type safe. And yeah, the, the provided next config didn't guard from non-implicit any's, which could easily leak through this. The result was code that looked and felt more type safe, but actually wasn't and would have most of the same issues I described earlier, which is terrifying, especially since you won't get type errors. I then describe the manually typing solution, which is what you expect. 
I don't want to keep just harping on this article. The next section is me t shilling TRPC, which actually solves this problem really well. If you haven't already checked out TRPC, I have a ton of content about that. If you want to read the rest of this article, I'll link it in the comments. Oh, this was actually when server components were announced. Oh, that's actually really funny. I didn't pre-read my own article and I should have because this is what I was here to talk about now. <laughs> so server components fix a lot of this. In this example, I have user ID come through as a string and then I actually do the Prisma call in the component. The issue here is this would be a promise. So I'd have to await here, but I can't because this wasn't async at the time. And I actually don't think I complained about it at the time. Yeah, I didn't, because this was before they had announced that server components could be async. So this code actually wouldn't work. This was roughly what they were going for, but it wasn't possible. I have a video I recorded around the time where I complained about how I thought this would work and it didn't. But thankfully, this roughly ended up being the direction they go in. So let's take a look at how type safe app router really is. So the magic of the new system is I can run server code here because this is a server component. So that server to client boundary that used to cause so many problems just doesn't exist here. So we're gonna do a default async function. It's mad because it's not doing anything async in it. We have really good lint rules in Create 3 app, which I love. But let's get some data. Goes await db dot select dot from. What do we actually have defined in here? Oh, we have the fancy schema stuff now. Query dot posts dot find first. Cool. And now this returns all of the data. So in this instance, a post has an ID, text, a created at, and an updated at. Also has an index, but we don't care about that here. So the type should be all of these things with strings, except for ID, which should be a number. And if we go in here, data dot, and we have all of these things, as you would expect. Pretty convenient and pretty dope. So if I wanted to use this, like I wanted to render h1 data dot text. There you go. And I know that this is going to be text. And if I wanted to put like the date added at, I could do new date or data dot. Oh, it's already a date. That's cool. Dot uh, to local date string. Cool. And now if this item has created at on it, which almost all of them will, we can to local date string it and have the title and the date that this was created all just printed in our UI. Previously, if I had done this inside of a get server side props and expected to have it here, I would have had to define a type here, which again, defining more types is adding more potential for failure. I would have had to make sure that server side props was actually there and returning the exact data that this expects, that that contract was guaranteed one-to-one -one relationship and that all the data that was supposed to be there was. And also that I didn't have something in between like, uh, what was it called? Um, document.t or app.ts that would get in the way and not actually pass the data all the way down to the page component. There was a lot of opportunities to lose data there. And I'm so thankful those are gone because those were obnoxious to deal with. And just fetching the data you need in the component directly is a significantly better win. And if I wanted to pass this data to another component, like let's say I make, I'm putting the underscore in front so the next router knows to not include this in the route table. So we'll do components and I'll put in here post component post view.tsx. Cool for const post equals return div. And I'm gonna grab all the content I have here, cut, paste. We don't have data here. We want data here. So I'm gonna manually define it here. We'll have props, props type is data. I'll even just call it post. We'll say that the post has text, which is a string. And we'll say it has a created at date. I'll grab both of these props dot post. This looks great. And now if I want to render this post equals data, oh, this is actually because I forgot to import it. I import it. Oh, no, I'm getting a type error. Oh, that's because this might actually not be defined. So we actually made our code more type safe here because when I wrote my expectations for what this needs, they're not being honored by what we're actually returning. And since you're explicitly passing this data here, rather than an implicit boundary like at server side props, you actually get a type error when something tries to consume from the other side. And obviously this is still true if this was a client component, if I just throw like use client up here, this is effectively doing what get server side props used to. The big difference is we're actually importing the component and mounting it and passing it data while it's still type safe rather than implicitly returning it and then implicitly consuming it because both are in the same file. Since we're actually using React itself to pass this code around and to pass this data around, we no longer have a lot of the type safety concerns that we used to. And that's such a massive win. The boring easy way to check these types of things. Why is this mad? Probably if Oh, because this could be an optional chain. What is this mad about? I want to get this working for the video. God, I'm really confused about this one. I'm so sorry, FaZe. Do you think he means it? I'm going to do this the, the right way, so to speak, and use the model type 
for this. So after a little bit of TypeScript shenanigans, because such is life, here we have infer select model, which is a helper from Drizzle that you give a model you want to get the type from. So now this is going to be passed a post, which has these properties. If we hop back over here, we're getting an error. And that's because the post might not exist. Quick solution there to do a check like this to just be sure data exists. You could also return early up here because you probably want a different behavior here. If no data, maybe you want to or not found, which is the next navigation helper to redirect to your 404 page. So if it doesn't find a post for the page, then we can just redirect to not found super quickly. That easy. It's actually really impressed with how much better the workflow for stuff like this is. Because again, there is no case where you write a type definition and your component doesn't honor it on the server because you're passing it through the server component. And as long as your data is being explicitly passed from the component to the other component with code that you wrote, you're good. I don't think not found throws. Oh, does it? Oh, it does. Even better. You don't have to return when you do the not found call, which means I can make this even cleaner like that. Check that out. Tell me that's not a dope, simple bit of code for something that wouldn't have been anywhere near as safe before. Really nice, really clean, really convenient to work with. And it's actually type safe. So where are the problems? Here's where things get fun. One of the things that the new app router does really well is layouts. You can have a top level page that has certain things in it. Like let's say it has your top level like auth and sign in button and stuff like that. Let's say it gets data that you need for all of your pages, like all of your posts or something that's used in a menu. Let's say I just happen to get some data here, const some data equals whatever, hello world. And I wanna have access to this data in my children components. I can do that by doing this, right? What was this mad about? Unsafe call of an any type value. Cool. So our rules prevent you from doing this, thankfully. But if we go turn off whatever lint rule this is, I thought you could still do this and it was just cursed, but it looks like you explicitly can't, which is significantly better. I actually like that. The architecture of app router is such that this layout is the top level layout. You know that because it's the layout.tsx file directly in app. So this is the first place where markup is rendered for your application and it probably should be run on server. Because of that, we immediately return HTML and then body and then the children. This children component here is the children of the layout, which in this case is the immediately nested page.tsx. If you were to have a sub route here that had a page.tsx in it, this layout would be applied at the top level to it. So this layout wraps everything. If you had a sub route with its own layout, that would be the next child and then the page would be the child underneath that. But that nesting is a really powerful part of the composition of the app router model. The catch is this is just a children prop in React, so you can't really pass it different data. Previously in the page router, when you had the app.ts file at the root, this app file, again, wrapped the whole thing, but it wrapped every page directly. It didn't have this concept of nesting. But worse, it handed you this component as well as page props. This was so you could have access to anything that happened in get server side props if you wanted to do things on the app top level, like change the title or render a 404 or do those types of things. But now it relies on you rendering component yourself, this is the page component that should be on the file for the route that's rendering. And you have to manually dump and pass the props here yourself. This leaves so much room for type safety to be failed. If you accidentally pass page props without triple dot dumping it, if you pass it as props equals, if you do anything else in here, which it will allow, you're not actually going to get the data from your get server side props there. And if you also add another check here, like let's say you do an auth check in here and pass the auth data to the page component, you don't actually know if it's going to be there or not. You also don't know if it's going to be fresh data or stale data because this file might have run on build or if you have get server side props it might run every time the page is fetched so there's no guarantee of really anything with this pattern at all i think that's why the next team went so out of their way to make sure it's not possible in the new model you just get this blind children prop that you render you can't pass it new properties you can't do anything to it you just render it and that prevents so many of these categories of errors but what if you need the same data in two places what if you need to fetch something that you're using in the layout to determine how how to render the page, but you need that same data in the page as well. This is why they've done all the aggressive caching stuff in the new next model, especially with fetch and fetch wrappers, because if you fetch from the same endpoint in three different components, maybe one is this layout and then two are other random pages or whatever, you only have to do that fetch once, get the data, and then it can share the data across all those instances. They also have a new cache helper in next where you can wrap any async function with the word cache. And now you can call this function, get item in multiple places, and it will only be called once. You can use react's cache function which on that server render will make sure this request only has to happen once if you only pass it in one unique value. If you call get item five times, but you only ever pass it one ID, that only have to get called once to prevent deduping. 
Unstable cache, terrible name, and these need to be very differently named, very clear which you use for what. This is a next feature that lets you also set a manual cache key as well as revalidation, tags, and a lot of other things. So this lets you cache a specific function across many requests across many users and key it so that you know that that function call is a unique key value pair. This allows you to blindly call the same function multiple places and not have to worry about running it 15 times per request. So this helps immensely with waterfalls, with refetching data you don't need to refetch. It gives you programmatic cache invalidation using this new unstable cache feature, which is dope. Let's say you're building a common feature on your blog and you want to limit how often your database is getting hit. You might make one database call that gets the post and all of its comments, but you don't want to get that every time someone goes to the page. But if you cache it, what are you going to do when somebody leaves a new comment? Well, on the comment endpoint, you could actually invalidate the database call by calling the key that it was set for. And now the next request will cache a new value and every request from there is going to hit that cache. It's more trivial than ever to prevent unnecessary compute, unnecessary refetching of data and unnecessary server requests by just wrapping things in cache. It's significantly easier to work with and again, avoids all of these weird type safety problems. And this isn't just a thing that happens in React and the client. This is a full stack infrastructure level caching method that's significantly more reliable than anything existing before it. I am really, really hyped on these patterns and they avoid so many of the type safe issues that used to exist in this model. I actually thought I was going to find more problems. I had specific concepts for things that I didn't think were going to work. And the next team did a really good job of preventing those and providing better alternatives. It's much harder to have type safety issues in Next.js with this new model. I'm genuinely hyped that AppRouter solves a lot of my issues with type safety because it makes it that much easier for me to recommend Next.js. I think it's time I write a new blog post and update the existing one to make it clear that the new model solves the problems that I used to have. It's so nice seeing the next team embracing TypeScript and I'm excited for a future where the average application is full stack type safe back to front from database to the user rendering the component. If you like this, let me know. I'll pin a video in the corner all about using TypeScript wrong and I'll pin a video there that's something YouTube thinks you're gonna like. So check one of those out if you haven't already. Good seeing you guys as always. Peace nerds.